There are seven seconds remaining in the game. The Golden State Warriors are tied 141 to 141 with the Atlanta Hawks in double overtime. Who do you guys think is about to win the game for the Warriors? It can't be Steph Curry or Andrew Wiggins because they aren't playing. Maybe it's Klay Thompson who had 54 points at the time, or Jordan Poole who's been averaging nearly 30 points a game the last month. It was none of those guys. Seven seconds. Draymond at five. Clay for the lead. Long. Looney tip. No. Looney yes. Looney yes. The Warriors win it. Now what makes this game winner from Looney so great isn't because of how genuinely excited he and everyone else on the team was for him or the fact he was the least likely on the court to end up with a game winner but this was a product of an entire game in which Looney did what he does best. He crashed the offensive glass. More specifically, he did it 10 times, which was only the 13th time this season that has happened. That was after he had eight the game before. 18 offensive rebounds in two games for Looney. That is nine offensive rebounds a game over that stretch, which would rank 25th in the league amongst NBA teams. And Loon did that himself over a two game stretch. This is a six foot nine player, by the way. But before we talk more about Loon and just how great he continues to be, there's no game winner for the dubs if Clay Thompson didn't score 54 points. 54, including some typically ridiculous threes from Clay. Obviously, the most highlighted three will be the step back three he made to put the Warriors in front late in the game, but it's plays like this that pretty much only Clay Thompson can make. Anthony Lamb is trapped in the corner. Clay runs over to give him an option, and with Hunter all over Clay, he catches it going right, turns left, and somehow makes the shot from an impossible angle. That's a shot that Clay has made look normal but it is anything but. Or again, late in the game from the opposite corner where Draymond hands it over to him and John Collins jumps on the pump fake before Clay shoots while he's still in the air and makes yet another ridiculous shot from a tough angle. It's this kind of shot making that has led to Clay averaging 35 points a game over his last four. Yes, 35 on great efficiency as well. But it hasn't just been his three-point shooting either over this stretch of games. He's been great from two-point range, he's used his size to finish inside, and against the Hawks in particular, his playmaking was great. You might wonder how it was great when he had 54 points and only three assists. Well, after Clay got off to such a hot start, the Hawks were pressing him on a lot of those handoffs, and Clay did such a great job at not forcing shots, like on this play where he makes a perfect pocket pass to Dre, who draws a Kongwu over, which results in loony free throws. Making these passes is crucial, because otherwise the defense can just press up on him every single time and force him into difficult shots or turnovers, but Clay made multiple great pocket passes that resulted in free throws or points. Or even just when his gravity alone forces two defenders towards him, like on this play where he finds Draymond in space under the rim because of the two defenders drawn to him, Draymond kicks it to Dante, who finds Paul, and then back to Clay for a perfect Golden State three. The kind of three that Steve Kerr will have dreams about all starts with Clay Thompson drawing two defenders, and this is what makes him so dangerous. We saw it last year, but recently we are seeing a more aggressive off the ball Clay, who looks so much more dangerous cutting, and I can only imagine how this is going to look with Steph and Wiggins back in the starting lineup. But outside of Clay dropping 54 points, the Warriors are on a completely improbable five game winning streak. You probably think I'm talking about the absence of Steph and Wiggs. That's one thing, but just forget about that for a second. It's now four games in a row that the Dubs have gone on a run to finish that game, with three games in a row now that they've come from behind to win. 
Four games ago against Charlotte, they were tied at 101 to 101 before going on a 9 to 4 run to close out the game. Three games ago against Utah, they were down 101 to 97 before going on a 15 to 6 run in the final seven minutes. And against Portland, well, they went on the run of all runs, a 16 and 2 run after the Blazers had 110 to 102 lead with five minutes remaining, only to do it again against Atlanta after the Hawks had a nine-point lead with five minutes remaining. There is genuinely something different going on in Chase Center, because not only are the Dubs winning in miraculous ways without Steph Curry, but here's an even crazier stat. Do you remember the 2016-17 Warriors team? Yeah, the team with Steph and KD. I think you remember them. That team won 67 games. This current Warriors team has a better home winning percentage than that team. They won 67 games. This team is on pace to win 43 games whilst having an 85% win rate at home. If the dubs can just be okay away from home, even if they're bad but not the worst in the league, they're a top four seed guaranteed because of this home court advantage. Now I've mentioned him a hundred times already, but the biggest reason the dubs have continued to close out these games is DPOY Mond. Yes, we have to talk about Draymond's defense again because he came up clutch for the fourth game in a row. I'm just going to show you guys one play. Four minutes left in the game, the Hawks are up four. JP gets his shot blocked. Yeah, that happened a few times that game. No other Warriors player gets back in defensive transition, which leaves Draymond in a three-on-one situation. DeJounte makes the right play and passes when Dre starts committing to Trey, but Dre turns around and swipes away a surefire DeAndre Hunter layup. The Hawks ended up not scoring on that possession, and the Warriors scored on the next one. It's those plays that make all the difference in a close game like that, and Draymond has been making those plays every single time down the stretch over the last several games. But speaking of the little effort plays that make a big difference, let's get back to Looney, because obviously his game winner was the highlight of the match, but his ability to grab offensive rebounds as someone who is an undersized center with no vertical jump is unbelievable. He's just smart. The second he gives the handoff to JP here, he knows Okongwu will be drawn out, which allows him to get to the rim and grab the board over a smaller defender. Or a lot of the time, it's just extra effort and strength, like where he's constantly engaged with the Blazers player before tipping it to himself and securing the board. And what's so great about Loon's rebounding ability is these offensive boards feel even more crucial in the playoffs when every possession feels like it's worth two. An offensive rebound from Loon that leads to a Steph three feels like the dagger of all daggers. Anyways, I don't know what's in the water at Chase Center, but it's leading to some ridiculously entertaining games and a lot of wins as well, which is great. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day. Bye.